Hello, Jen and Tara. This is my little tutorial for how to run the R script to fit the smoothing spline in Novus. So, uh, step one is to set your working directory. When you start doing this, you want to create a folder where you're going to put the data file. Uh, but then to be able to read it in, in R, you have to run a command to set the working directory to that data file. The easiest way to do this in your case is to go to session, set working directory, choose directory, and then just select wherever your folder lives. So for instance, in my case here, I have it in a folder called Spline Inova. And actually when you select that, it'll generate the equivalent text commands in the R console, which you can just copy and paste here. And then anytime you rerun the code, you don't have to fiddle around with choosing it with the mouse. Okay, then we can get a list of files in that directory. So we can see what's there and then uh, choose specifically uh, the data set you want to load. In this case, it's format data R for david.csv. Okay, notice how now we've called it gen df, gen data frame. The next thing you need to do is um, install and load the packages that you need um, to run the analysis. Now, if you've never done this analysis before, you're going to want to run the lines that say install packages. But since I've used RStudio to um, load these toolboxes before, I can just uncomment them out. And then in the future, if after you save the script and you re reuse it, you don't ever need to run those install packages lines. So I'm just going to load the toolboxes, GSS, GPLOT2, and reshape. The next step then is to get a sense of the data. I can see what the column names are. So these are the variables here. Notice I can also just go to my working directory and expand it to see what all the entries are or what all the column headers are. And if I click on it here, I can actually see it itself as if it were in Excel. So actually one thing you might have noticed is that here the IPA palatal symbol got a little bit messed up, uh, but we're gonna fix that in just a moment. Uh, yes, so here you can see the unique values for each of the columns. For instance, here are all your participant names, uh, the languages, uh, unique uh, words, and unique nasality values. So as I mentioned just earlier, notice how the IPA symbol gets messed up when R reads this. I tried to get it set up so that it read a UTF-8 encoded Excel file, but I couldn't quite get it to work. So an easy workaround we're gonna do here is to reformat it so it'll turn the question mark into the IPA symbol. For this, we're gonna use the G sub function. Notice uh, what we have to do here is just say, look for this pattern and replace it with that in this text string. So here, what we're doing is replacing Spanish question mark with the Spanish IPA symbol within the variable uh, GenDF nasality. And that here, fixed equals true means that it's only looking for exact matches. So after we do that, uh, yes, now you can see that the values will look good. The IPA symbols will be there correctly. Uh, and then actually, we need to re reformat this so it's stored as a factor rather than just as a character string. And that's because R does certain analyses by uh, making certain categories as factors. Um, so it's some kind of like annoying underlying reformatting thing you have to do. We should also do this reformatting for group. So the speaker group, so that it's saved in the data frame as a factor rather than as a text string. Finally, um, F1 bark and F2 bark, the way they're stored here at the moment uh, can be, is as characters. Well, actually it doesn't look like it at the moment, but um, if you run these functions, it'll make sure to store them as numerics and then you won't have any issues with that. Um, the next step is to define the function for um, fitting the ANOVAs themselves. Now this comes directly from the code that, or from the tutorial that you had sent me. All you have to do is if you put your cursor here at the beginning of the line and run it, R will automatically read everything within these curly brackets and store in its memory a function. The function itself is it's a new function that you've defined on the spot and that the code below is going to run. Okay, now to start producing the plots, uh, actually there's a lot of sub steps we have to take uh, involving uh, formatting the data, running the functions, and then plotting it. So every time that we run or that we create one of these plots, Okay, um, we're going to first have to subset the data. So we're going to create like a, a mini copy of the data frame uh, with just the stuff that we want. And then we run the functions. And then we're going to keep 
um, iterating through the process of creating many data frames to produce the plots. So first thing we do, the first plot we want is all three speaker groups, just the Spanish pl uh, palatal. So here I'm going to filter the data set so that I have one that only has the palatal values. You see now we have another copy of the data set called Datal for Now, and all it is is the Spanish palatals. So after you do this, um, I I had some bugs before because R stopped treating as a, as a factor. So actually here, if you set uh, nasality, factor nasality, it'll make sure to drop levels that are unobserved because I'd had a bug at one time where it retained the other values for some reason. But if you run this command, it'll make sure to drop all of the unused levels. Okay, all uh, right. And then uh, the next step is to actually run the ANOVA itself. So here's where you actually might need to change some of the stuff in the script. Here, notice that we have dependent variable predicted by uh, normalized time times group. So that allows us to compare group one, group two, group three within this data set that we've created data for now. So notice that when we plot different things, for instance, if instead of comparing uh, different groups, we're comparing different nasalities, then we want to be sure to change that. So you run that command, it'll run the ANOVA. And then these next really complicated looking things are just some follow up code that takes the ANOVA you fit and um, pulls out a bunch of values for the plotting. So you can just run these as a block. Okay. Now, actually, what we were doing above was just on um, using as the dependent variable the F1 bark values. We're going to do the same thing again, but this time for the F2 bark values. So here we have this SS ANOVA uh, yes, function, and then the dependent variables change the F2 bark. Okay. So go ahead and run it. And then run all this follow up code too. Okay. And so what we have at this point is one data frame that's called F1DF, with, which has all the values for F1 bark and another one called F2DF, which has all the values for F2Bark. We want to put these two uh, data sets together into one big data frame so that we can uh, plot it all together on ggplot because I was having issues before with putting together two ggplot outputs when they came from two data sets. So what we're doing instead is we're combining the F1 and the F2 data sets uh, so that we can run ggplot on that to plot what we want. Um, so before we combine the two data sets, uh, we're going to just label the column names. So what these next two lines do is it adds to the F1 uh, data frame uh, the little tag F1. So you see we're redefining the column names. And now when you look at the column names for the F1 data set, it says group F1, time F1, fit F1, standard error F1. And then we do the same for F2. And then we put F1 and F2 together. And when you look at this, you notice that the columns that you have here, it's as if you had all of the F1 columns and all the F corresponding F2 columns right next to each other. And notice how, um, because they come from the same repeated measure stuff, it's it's matched up exactly here in terms of which participant and which time point it, it refers to. Now to actually produce the plot, we're going to um, run this ggplot function. So the way the ggplot works is you define a few parameters and then you keep uh, entering these statements where you add things to it. But just to um, unpack some of the syntax here for you, here you have the data frame that you're plotting, which you want on your x axis, which you y on, want on your y axis, and then uh, any other groupings, like for instance, um, col uh, for different colors or different shapes or stuff like that, you can add in other um, factors in experiment. So in this case, group F1 refers to if they're L1, L2 advanced, or L2 beginner speakers. Okay. Uh, and then notice just the other term here in ggplot is geom ribbon, which creates the actual ribbons that we're plotting. Right. Uh, but notice that this entry here corresponds to the stuff for F1. Uh, and then this entry here, another geom ribbon statement, corresponds to uh, the stuff for F2. And then these here, theme, this is defining the theme of the plot. And this one's kind of important where it says labs, this is where you can change the labels. So for instance, uh, when I change nasality to nasal segment, this is where I could change it. Or if you want the, the x-axis label or the y-axis label to change, there you can do it. So 
highlight all this together, everything that's defining what the plot is, and run it. This doesn't actually spit out the plot, it just defines what the plot is. If you want to view the plot in RStudio, just run the line, just call it, right? And then you see that the plot will stick out here, okay? And then we can also use a line of code to save this automatically using ggsave. So ggsave, and then a file name that you like. Notice how I'm ending it in .png to save it as a PNG file. And then uh, you call here the ggplot object that you've just created. So here you can change this to whatever you want. I've called it Comparison of Spanish Plato Across Groups, October 20th, or October 2020. Hit ggsave, okay. And now it's a saving 8.81 times 4.8. Now this file will appear in your R directory, okay? And now, so with this, we've created the first plot. Now we're just gonna keep doing the same things to create the other plots. And notice that on each iteration, all I really have to change is how I group the data and maybe what certain labels are. So for instance, the next plot to make here was uh, for L2 advanced speakers, uh, the three nasal segments compared to each other. So let's do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna take only L2 advanced and we're gonna um, extract them from the data. We're gonna run the ANOVA on them. Notice now how here I have norm time times nasality because I'm comparing the different nasal segments rather than comparing different groups, okay? So it might take a little bit of time to run the ANOVA and then you have the follow-up code to do. And then these things, uh, as long as you find and replace where you used to say group and replace it with nasality you can just run this right out of the box essentially so you highlight it all and it'll do everything automatically here notice how underlyingly it's going through the same process of doing it for f1 doing it for f2 uh adding tags to the <clears throat> adding tags to the column names for the f1 data set and the f2 data set and then just putting them together okay and then here we're defining the plot. Uh, here you can change some of the labels uh, if you like. Okay. Oh, and notice too that I'm changing color to refer to nasality rather than to refer to group. And that's how I that's how I can uh, get it to compare nasal segments in the plot instead of comparing different participant groups in the plot. Okay. So you can call it, you can check what it looks like. And if you're happy with it, then again, you can run a command to save the plot. Okay, again, I'll show you exactly the same thing, but this time we're only doing it on the L2 beginner group. I notice it's exactly the same code, but as long as you um, wrangle the data uh, the right way to begin with, they can just run it essentially right out of the box. So we're gonna pull out uh, anybody who's L2 beginner. We're gonna run the ANOVA where we're comparing where it's um, the F1 value and then time times nasality. Okay, and then run the follow-up code. And then we're gonna run the ANOVA, but now for F2, and do the follow-up code. Okay, and we're gonna append the data set so the F1 and the F2 values are in one data set. And then we're gonna define the plot. Again, notice how I've changed anything about color or fill to nasality. And that's so that we can compare nasals instead of uh, group values in the way that a color set. The reason is that it's nasality F1, instead of just saying nasality, is because I had appended F1 to the grouping variable when I put the data sets together earlier. I could have called it F2, it's no difference because it's all essentially the same values. Anyway, so I run it, I can check the plot, looks good, and then I can save it. Okay, now we're gonna compare uh, groups again. We're gonna compare um, the English nasal in L2 beginners and L2 advanced. So we're going to filter only for people who are not L1 speakers. This exclamation mark and equal sign means not L1. Okay. And then um, now we're going to filter for uh, nasality values that are English and J. Now we're uh, doing that thing where we reset them as factors, so we drop unused levels. Okay, we have the ANOVA function here. We're comparing the two groups. We're, so we're changing, instead of compare, uh, having in the ANOVA function, exactly we have groups, and you run the follow-up code for that. And yes, okay. And then here, we're doing the same thing, but we're doing it on the F2 values. 
So now it says F2 VARC instead of F1 VARC. And I made sure to change the way that it runs the ANOVA so the comparison uh, is between groups rather than between nasal segments. Then I put in the data sets for F1 and F2 together and I bind them into a master data frame. Here I'm defining the plot. Okay, notice that I've changed color from nasal segment back to group in this case. And here's the ggplot function. If you wanted to change the labels, you can see in the syntax here where the text is, nasal segment, group, etc. Okay, the plot looks good. So let's go ahead and save it. Here, everything in the question marks tells you what the file name will be. Okay, the last plot that you wanted me to make was for uh, individual participants, uh, comparing them also to the average of the L1. This one's a little bit difficult because we're going to do it in two steps. First, we need to pull out um, the average of L1 and save it as a separate data set. And then we have to cycle through each individual's data sets and compare that person to the L1. So the tricky things are A, pulling out uh, one value that you append to other values later, and B, having to iterate through each participant's data sets. So let's do the first part. We need to pull out a data set for L1 for Spanish palatal. Here, actually, we just have to do the same steps as before, um, where as long as you've defined at the beginning that you want L1 Spanish palatal, it'll essentially run itself, so to speak. Notice now how in the ANOVA, though, there's no factor of comparison. It's just F1 by time, F2 by time, because there's no comparisons across segments or across groups. Okay. Um, of course, we're not saving this plot, but we can check that it looks good. Here, notice how in this ggplot um, definition, I no longer have group or fill because I'm not, I'm not adding color as a dimension here in this plot. This is the F1 and the F2 values for the average of L1 Spanish. And so this data is going to be um, combined or appended to each individual data set when we go through the loop. Okay, so let's save it separately. First, I'm adding labels to this data frame. It's just, oh, okay, to this nasality value, uh, it's not just English or Spanish N or Spanish N. Now, this nasality value is its own thing called the average of L1 Spanish palatal. Okay, and so we add this column. Uh, to the master data frame so we can save it for later and then we call it differently here we call it l1 data master data frame okay so this data frame here let me show you this way this data frame uh, here is going to be saved or it's going to be used uh, later on in the plots we make now to move on to the second hard part which is iterating through each participant the way we do it is we set up a for loop where we say for each of the items for each of one through 10, do something, right? That's what's called the for loop. So we're gonna set up a for loop to go through each uh, unique value for speaker number and uh, create the data sets for those people, okay? So the way you start a for loop in R is you say for, and then any letter you choose for that letter in, and then a list of numbers. Here we have the list one to the length of the uh, unique speaker numbers. So we have 27 unique participants in the data set. So this is gonna go from one to 27. And each time it does it, the letter I is gonna be replaced by the counter. So I is gonna equal one, the first time it runs through it, then it's gonna equal two, then it's gonna equal three. So before we run this whole code, actually we wanna set up the for loop correctly because it'll just do everything under the hood. We wanna make sure that it's doing the right thing. So the easiest way to do it is to artificially set the counter to a certain value and then run the lines within the for loop individually. So here we're not actually running the loop, we're just testing out what each line would do if we're artificially replacing the counter with a given number. So for instance, we have a, a, data, a subset data for now, and I've made this equal to um, the data for which the speaker ID equals the first uh, unique speaker number. Okay, so this is the data for one participant. And then for that participant, I'm going to do the uh, norm time times nasality SS ANOVA. Okay. And then run the follow-up code. And then I'll do the same thing for F2. See, I'm going through the F2 values. And then I'm doing that same process I showed before of combining the F1 and F2 data sets. Okay. And then putting them together and then making a plot for that person. Oh, actually, and here's the important thing. 
after I've combined the F1 and the F2 data sets, then I also have, I have to combine this data set with the L1 average of the Spanish palatal with that data set. So when I do that, actually, um, I want to join the data sets by rows instead of by joining it by columns. Because when I join it by rows, it's as if I'm adding a fourth condition to the uh, nasality values. Um, so yeah, anyway, so when you do that, now master data frame is going to have one participant's uh, data plus the average of the Spanish palatals from the L1 speakers that I showed before. And then here's what the plot would look like. Notice that here color, uh, fill, all that is called, um, uh, all that is being defined here so that we have these out in such as different colors. And then we can see what the plot would look like. And this looks like we want, right? We have the three values for this participant and then the average of, uh, of Spanish speakers that I showed before. Now, when we save these plots, what we want to do in the for loop is generate a new participant or a new file name so that we don't keep overriding the same file when we say different files for each participant. So here I'm defining a text string, which is the combination of nasal plot versus L1 Spanish palatal, and then that speaker ID or the participant number, and then the tag .png for the file extension. And I'm separating uh, each of those three terms with an underscore. So this is what the generated file name would look like. You can change it to something prettier. Uh, and then when you run gg save, um, then it'll automatically save it that way. Okay. So we've when we've gone through and checked it ourselves, and it looks like the for loop is doing what we want. Um, so. Uh, let's go to the top of the for loop and we just run it from the beginning here and it'll go through each participant so what's it 26 or 27 times it's going to print this little output that says saving such and such in image okay you can know that it's working because it has the little red stop sign here and because the little arrow hasn't popped up here and so that shows that it's it's running through it Mm -hmm. But yes, that's my tutorial of how to run the code so that you can generate the files, generate the plots that you need. I hope it was helpful.